this is the Reolink Duo 2 and this is now recording in 4K resolution and it has a 180 degree panoramic field of view. Is this going to be a good option for your home? <laughs> Let's find out. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we are going to check out the second iteration of the Reolink Duo, the Duo 2. I did review the first versions a while back and I will link it down below if you haven't seen them yet. One of the main complaints in the first version is that the color and exposure on both cameras don't match, which Reolink eventually improved by a firmware update. The other one is more on the user experience. Because you have two cameras, Reolink just used the two camera streams and just kind of combined them in the app, but there's still two camera views. This new version fixes that by using software, which I'm assuming on the camera itself, to stitch and combine the two camera streams into one stream before leaving the camera. And you have this one panoramic type of view from the two lenses, which makes the user experience way better than the older version. Reolink is also now using an 8 megapixel sensor and overall up the resolution to 4K quality which is not the traditional 4K because of the wide field of view. It is 4608 by 1728 pixel resolution. Plus, they also increased the field of view further to 180 degrees panoramic view. It has 170 degrees horizontal and 60 degrees vertical, which results to 180 degrees diagonal field of view. Thank you, Reolink, for sending me these two cameras to be reviewed. I have the PoE and the Wi-Fi versions. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you and I appreciate it. This Duo 2 also has all the features that other Reolink cameras have like their AI detection, person and vehicle detection, and also has the new pet detection. It has an 8 LED spotlights, 560 lumens for color night vision, and also have the traditional infrared black and white night vision. We will check out two versions in this video, the PoE or Power over Ethernet and also the Wi-Fi version. Specs and feature-wise of both models are all the same except for a few, and one of them is how it connects. PoE just needs a PoE injector or a PoE switch and needs only one Ethernet cable to connect to the camera. The Wi-Fi version needs the 12 volt power supply and can connect to both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. The Duo 2 is weather resistant with an IP66 rating. As to storage, it can store footage using a micro SD card up to a 256 gigabyte card and will also work with a Reolink NVR and it can record motion events or 24 seven recording. With the PoE version, inside the box we have some paperwork. We have the short Ethernet cable, mounting screws, plastic anchors, machine screws, Allen wrench, and push pin. We have the plastic mount with metal blaze plate. We have the camera itself, which design wise hasn't changed from the original version. We have the two lenses. We have the 3 plus 3 total of 6 infrareds and 4 plus 4 total of 8 LED spotlights. We have the light sensor and the mic. On top, we have a quarter 20 screw mount and also one in the bottom. And we also have a covered micro SD card slot and reset hole. And on the back end is the speaker. As to connection, this is PoE or power over Ethernet. And we have the Ethernet port for that. But it also does have a 12 volt power port if you're not connecting this with PoE. And lastly, inside the box is the Philips driver. The Wi-Fi version box has the same stuff except that it has two MIMO antennas. And because power supply is required, it comes with a 4.5 meter or about 15 feet extension cable and a 12 volt power adapter, two amps. And on the camera itself, it will have screw points for the antennas. And as to the connection, it looks the same as the PoE version. But this Wi-Fi model needs to be powered by the 12 volt power supply. And the Ethernet port is when you want to directly connect this to your router. A PoE switch or injector will not power this. As to setup, PoE is straightforward. Plug in the camera to a PoE switch, open the app, and the camera will show up in the bottom of your camera's list. Click on it to finish setup. Type in a device password and name your device and it should be connected. As to the Wi-Fi version, I'm used to adding cameras by scanning the QR code method, but it doesn't work for this model. And to set this up, you have to plug this in directly to your router and the power supply. And then you can set up the Wi-Fi connection from here. Now time to install this. With the PoE version, I'll do the wall install. Screw in the metal bracket with the two included screws, hook the mount to the bracket and secure it with the included machine screw. 
Screw in the camera using the Allen wrench and tighten the screws to keep the camera in place. Reelink also stated that you can install this using the mount under the eaves or horizontal install. But because the mount is a bit too long and a little bit flimsy when the camera is installed and it just doesn't look good, it is way better if you just use a regular screw-in camera mount. The shorter ones, the better. And just screw in the ball head to the top of the camera, screw the ball head and the camera to the mount, and as you can see, it is more solid, secure, and looks way better. Let's check some of the settings in the app. When you open up the app, you will see these snapshots from the cameras. Click on it to get to live view, which loads up decently quick. In here, you can pause the live view, listen in, take a snapshot, or record the live view. You can change the resolution of the live view to fluent or full resolution. And you can click on this to show the full camera view. In here in the bottom, you can start two-way talk, which is full duplex. And playback is where you will see the recorded events. You can sort this out to just show person detected events. Click on the thumbnail and you will see in a bit that there is a person detected. And you can download the footage from here. On top, you can manually trigger the siren and you can manually turn on the spotlights. Clicking the gear icon, you will get to the camera settings. In here, I'll just show you the video quality of the recording. The highest resolution is 4608 by 1728, or you can lower it down to 4096 by 1536. And the maximum frame rate you can set is 20 FPS. And you can also change the bit rate from here. I'm also going to show you here in the advanced, there is image stitching option. And you can adjust the two camera views manually if you want, and you don't want the default, which is already pretty good in mine and it is seamless. You would think it is only from one camera. Also, I'll show you the detection alarm and you have detection zones and you can paint areas you don't want to be notified about. And you can adjust the motion sensitivity up to 50. And on smart detection, you can dial in the sensitivity of the person, vehicle, and animal AI. And on the push notifications, you can adjust the interval and get notifications every 20 seconds, 30, every minute, or every two minutes. And when you click schedule in the push notification, you can choose which notifications you want, which in my case, just persons and pets. Now, this is different in the recording, which I chose to record any motion also. I just don't get notifications of it. And lastly, just because this has spotlights and on the advanced and spotlight, you can adjust the brightness and you can change the mode from off or auto, which turns on only during motion at night or can be scheduled. Now, time to do some testing. This is the video and audio quality of the Reelink Duo version 2 and video clarity test at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Running my test. This is the video quality of the Relink Duo, the second version, and this is the Wi-Fi version also, and this is with the spotlights turned on, and this is what it looks like at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, This is the video quality of the Reelink Duo um, version 2 and this is at night and the infrared LED is turned on and there's six of them and this is what it looks like at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35,
we are going to test the motion alert notification speed of the Reolink Duo version 2 and because of the two lenses and how wide the field of view is when I get out of this wall I need to start the timer and I'm on my LTE connection and it is 1143 so let's check it out there you go that how fast that is and then when you click and hold there's still no rich notifications yet so I'll click on it and it should load up the live view and loads up pretty quick as to notification cool off you can set the uh, interval and I've set it to every 20 seconds so 1144 so it's been about 30 seconds and I should be getting another notification just like that and that quick we are going to test the detection distance of the Relink Duo version 2 and I've set it to person detection only and set it to the highest sensitivity so I'll go to the 50 foot fence line of mine right here and see if it will notify me not at 50 let's go 45 there you go 45 feet this is the audio quality coming out from real link 202 this is the audio quality coming out from real link 202 What do you think guys? Overall, this second version of the Relink Duo is definitely better than the first one. I like the 180 degree panoramic view and you can technically just use one of this and it can monitor your whole front or backyard. I like the seamless stitching of the footage from the two cameras and you're only going to have one video stream. Which I did hook this up to Reolink's NVR and it will only occupy one channel. You will notice though on the monitor screen, it has to squish the footage to fit the 16 by 9 aspect ratio of the monitor. AI person detection is pretty spot on, even their pet detection. Video quality is also pretty good, but remember the wider field of view means everything will be smaller. So when you start to digitally zoom in, the footage will be a bit softer compared to a narrower field of view camera, even with the same resolution. But remember, you have a way wider field of view compared to any other security camera out there. I noticed though in my testing that there is some issue or a bug in their AI detection at night. And also my PoE version has a hard time switching to infrared mode even when I already tweaked the switching mode slider. I already relayed this to Reolink and it should be fixed already by the time you are seeing this video or pretty soon. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.